موسیقی I happen to be Shazad Hassan Khan and we hope and pray that everybody out there is doing wonderfully well and that you're ready to kickstart your day with us. But first things first, hello Haja, Assalamu Alaikum, how are you? Walaikum Assalam, thank you so much Shazad for introducing me, Jazakallah Khair. So it's early in the morning, it's a very nice morning and I want to talk about a very pertinent issue that I think has grappled the entire South Asia or maybe Asia because I don't have that much of a knowledge about this particular medical issue which is of the obesity, right? Yeah. So in Pakistan, I always say it is a country of paradoxes because at one point we see that uh, there's so much poverty because we are a developing country, we are a third world country and at the other hand we see obesity on the rise yeah. especially among the women right because they're usually restricted in their houses they are they do not have the element of mobility in their lifestyles as much as, as of the men right so we do see especially in our southern belt which have lots of marginalized communities that obesity is on the rise while at the same time there's so much destitution and poverty levels there so mm. this is a very contradicting sort of a phenomena that is on the rise and i think as a nation we need to do something about it right I, you know i think that you've taken the first step we have taken the the first time we've started to talk about okay. it but there are two more things that I would love to talk about sure, over here ahead. and I would love to address this issue right. because whenever we talk about obesity there's right. one thing which I always remember about that and that is that you know so once I was lying down on the floor hmm. and uh, my father said look at you you're lying down and you have your belly protruding oh. you know, so I was like oh, and you work for television and <laughs> I was so embarrassed and ashamed I was like okay I need to do something about it so everybody needs to do something about it right. and if you think that you're eating too much and that you're not exercising it's your mm -hmm. responsibility to make yourself healthy and number two right. what what I believe that I would really uh, you know kind of talk about over here is that you know ever since that we were growing up you know that we come uh, across an age where you know we want to you know fill up our plates ourselves you know because <laughs> there's this transition where earlier you know it was your mother mm -hmm. who's going to put some curry and give you some roti yes, and you yes. were fine with it yes. but then there's this age of confidence and you're growing up you're like okay you know I'm going to do it myself so you put a lot of curry you do not know how hungry you are and once you put it all in your plate your mother on the other end was like bete nahi khaya jayega you won't be able to eat it mm -hmm. or finish it you're like nana I'm going to do it just because you're too hungry mm -hmm. and eventually what happens is that you're unable to finish it and then you have your mother standing on your head now you have to finish it that's I true, think that's, that's one true. thing which always kind of have mm. contributed mm. towards, you know, with children being very obese as well. Number two, fast foods. I mean, oh people God. really need to kind of consider it that, you know, that it's mm. not really healthy even mm. while you're not but exercising. But especially Shazad in the belts that have the marginalized communities or they are underprivileged, I don't think so that they do have the access to the fast food as the people who are living in the non-marginalized belts because fast food is very expensive as compared to the yeah. other organic food, that, right? That's true, uh, right? Haja, but you know, when we, when unfortunately we are to refer about right. the marginalized communities, I believe that they are way healthier than the people who live in the urban yeah. cities like Islamabad, yes, Lahore, Peshawar and elsewhere because their lifestyle is more active and where you've spoken mm -hmm. about that women are more restrictive in their houses, yes. I believe that it does contribute to it but mm -hmm. certainly it's everybody's responsibility True. to voice for them for their health right. that they really need to work out and exercise. May it be anything, you know, right. may it be walk, may it be 10,000 steps a day, you know, um, uh, and you know, you know it, you know, mm -hmm. we certainly need to exercise to make sure that we are healthier, mm -hmm. so that every single day and, we are and, more and closer I, towards I our goals. I think especially with the w women who are, uh, who have this household duties or they're more engaged in a domesticity uh, sort of the work. Uh, so it, when you talk to them about, you know, you need to have a healthier lifestyle and you need to walk a lot because nowadays we have the mo vehicles and we are not moving around. We just go on the vehicles and you know, park it uh, just across yeah. the shop or any place that we want to go and then, you know, again, uh, hop on the vehicle and come back to the houses. So um, they always say that we are doing so much work inside <laughs> our houses. You don't see it as a problem. You don't see it as a uh, excursion that we are, uh, I mean, reducing running that out, Running yes, after yes, kids yes. and whatnot. Yes, and so you it's know, difficult to reason. Exactly. And one more thing, you know, about mothers today and that is that, you know, so this is something which I'm witness mm -hmm. to myself that, you know, that you know, children will always have different sort of genes mm -hmm. and, you know, their bodies will react mm -hmm. to different foods. So, you know, mm -hmm. one kid you have 
is, is going to be a healthier kid mm -hmm. and the, on the other hand there's this other kid who's a younger sibling yes. but he or she is very skinny. Yes. So what the mother does is that mother, mother tries to give him or her a lot of fatty food, maybe nuggets, fried food and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And please, you know, it's a humble request that, you know, please do not do that. You're disturbing a child's life by giving such sort of food just so, you know, your eyes can see that, okay, you know, he's got chubby cheeks and whatnot, but it's not healthy for sure. kids. Other than that, for all of these fried foods mm -hmm. that we are having and consuming in winter specifically, mm -hmm. I think if you are to talk about it with all of those pakoras and samosas mm -hmm. and chaats, what happens is that there are a lot of outbreaks on your skin. And when we talk about skin issues in winters, there's multiple skin issues. For example, you know, while I was doing this World Cup campaign, you know, my makeup artist actually uh, spoke with me and mm -hmm. said that, you know, now even the base is not sticking on your skin. And I was like, why? He was like, you know, you know you've overdone it. So how do we make sure that we are going to keep our skin healthier, nice. exfoliated? What should we really do about it, ladies and mm -hmm. gentlemen? We have a wonderful guest over here True. and we would like to call him over here on the set of World This Morning today. He happens to be a consultant, a dermatologist. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Dr. Mubashir Ahad. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Good morning. Thank you so much for joining us. Wonderful Thank you to have much. you over Thank here. You Thank much. you so much. Sir, please take your seat. Thank Meanwhile, you. we will be taking our seats as well. So, first of all, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Thank salam. you so much for taking salam. our time for joining us. Wonderful right. to have you over here. And, Thank and, you, Sameer uh, Ji. Shazad, the skin is our biggest organ of the body, right? And we need to be more mindful of how we protect this blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I think as a humans, we take a lot of things for granted a true, lot, right? True. And when we are deprived of that name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then we realize that such a blessing it was and we never took care of that. Uh, so, Dr. Saab, it's the winter season and we see that winter affects skin differently, especially it's the smog season in the Lahore. So how to protect your skin in that sort of environment? First of all, thank you very much, Ms. Hajra and Mr. Shazad for inviting thank me you, on this show. Uh, skin care, as you have mentioned before, to take care of natural skin is very easy. And uh, what we do normally, we uh, uh, do a lot of experiences on our skin. We use uh, different creams, we use formula creams, and uh, which destroys our skin. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, we talk about the winter season and skin care in winter season, uh, in winter we need to moisturize the skin more as compared to summer. Uh, as compared to summer, uh, because as you have seen, the weather is dry outside, so the skin is dry as well. So to keep the skin moisturized, we used to uh, we. Uh, uh, need to do uh, most moisturize it mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. and uh, we need to take uh, more water because in winter season we don't feel thirsty so we don't take water so yeah. it's very necessary to take care of the skin uh, mm -hmm. by moisturizing it and by taking more water exactly so you know before we dig in deeper into what other issues are affiliated with the weather change and transitioning into from summer to to right. winters and water consumption <coughs> let's let's generically touch upon general skin health, you know, mm. because with different people, you know, there will be different solutions for them and people from different walks of life, people who live in different regions of the country or different parts of the world will have a very different application of how to keep their skin healthier. So if we are to generically discuss about skin health, mm -hmm. how do we identify whether our skin is healthier or not? Uh, first of all, if uh, you, you were mentioning before that uh, during World Cup, uh, your makeup artist was using more base, uh, I want to clear that uh, we have uh, two, three types of skin. Okay. One is the oily, second one is the combination skin, and third one is the dry skin. Okay. If, uh, uh, this, this is natural skin type. It doesn't mean that my skin is oily and skin is skin type is not good. Okay. It's good as well. Mm -hmm. uh, oily skin, for oily skin, we have different products to use. Okay. For example, uh, sunblock, we have different types of sunblock. For oily skin, we use the sebum control sunblock. And for oily skin, people have the acne issues. The people who have dry skin, they don't have acne. <laughs> the acne is the uh, issue of the oily skin people. Okay. Uh, in other words, if I explain it in medically, oily skin means that their skin has more sebum production. Mm -hmm. okay. So to stop that and to care uh, about, about the acne, so we need to take care of that skin and mm -hmm. uh, we need to treat the acne, we need to uh, treat the more sebum production and then we will be able, uh, we will be able uh, to keep our skin healthy. Wonderful. And uh, if you talk about the dry, uh, combination skin, combination skin is uh, we need to take care of it differently in summer and differently in uh, winter. Right. And uh, if the dry people, if the, the people who have the dry skin, mm -hmm. uh, for them we need to moisturize it more as right. compared to the people who have oily skin. Right. Uh, sorry, sorry, continue. Please, continue. Uh, as uh, Mr. Shahada asked me how to take care of this generically if you talk about yep. I, uh, I will sum up it in uh, three, four words. Sure. For example, f first one is uh, uh, use sunblock, either it's winter or it's summer. True. Sunblock is very much necessary. If we do, either we are living in the hilly areas, either we are living in the 
Whether uh, the sun is out or not. Sound, sun is out or not. We need to use a sunblock. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, every time. Okay. Mm -hmm. Every time I use a sunblock, you know, it burns in my eyes. I mean, this is something which I hate about it. Why do you put it on your eyes? I, mean, yeah. I just put it over <laughs> here like no, this. No, don't put it on the eyes. Oh, okay. <laughs> yes, he's right. Uh, don't, don't use a sunblock in the eye areas. Yeah. Okay? Uh, okay. We need to put it on the cheeks and the forehead as well. I never knew before that. Mm. Yeah. Right. Thank and you, Jibran. Second, uh, second thing is this, that uh, we need to take more water. Right. We need to improve our sleep. And we need to take uh, uh, fresh juices, fresh vegetables, and these all things improve our skin. Mm. And, and very quickly before okay. Haja moves on to her question, you know, this is something which I've witnessed mm. uh, majority of my life that, you know, maybe summer, maybe winters, I've never been using any moisturizer, you know. So oh now, really? now is the time that I've started to do it just because I feel that, you know, okay, it's getting a little dry or probably I'm not comfortable with it. Mm -hmm. But majority of my life, I've never, maybe summers, maybe winters, maybe any season, I've never used any moisturizer. So do you think that it's always a good idea to use or apply creams onto your skin, whether you feel it or not? Yes, it is very necessary okay. because uh, b normally we don't take that much of water to hydrate our skin. Okay. What okay. moisturizes it does, uh, it hydrates our skin. Yeah. Okay. Second thing is this, that uh, b aging is a process. Mm -hmm. What we cosmetologists or dermatologists do, we tell the people, uh, uh, you must have seen in the remote area, especially the people who is only, the, the person who is only 25 year age and he is having wrinkles, he having pigmentation, yes. he mm -hmm. has very rough Lasma, skin. Yeah. It doesn't mean that he is uh, b that much of old. Mm. Okay. And uh, if uh, the person who is, uh, uh, like if you talk about Mr. Shahzad, mm -hmm. he uh, seems like he is in 30. I don't know exactly <laughs> your age, but yeah. he, uh, he's, he, he looks so young. It means... Uh, because it, because I, I'm, I'm probably in my 30s hmm. and I'm young at heart. I think that's the only thing I can yeah. say now. Yeah. I mean that, that the so people who take, care of, uh, who take care of their skin, they, yeah. they, they are quite it young. Shows, yeah, it shows, yeah, yeah. It, it, it shows, shows in a personality. Yes, yes. we do hmm. get the point. Hmm. Uh, thank you so much. But one thing that is important is that, especially it's the winter season and in Pakistan, especially in the South Asia, uh, we um, do get the lots of sunbathing, right? Um, and uh, obviously, that also exposes our skin to the condition of the skin cancer or not. So, um, how effective is that practice, especially because, you know, in our balconies, we're sitting, we're having the peanuts or we're having the oranges and that is the time we're also having the gapshap with our families, um, especially early in the mornings. So, what sort of the care do we need to take off our skin uh, during that time? Uh, interestingly, in, uh, in Pakistan, most of the time, most of the people don't face the uh, skin cancer issues. The skin cancer issue is being faced there, in the, uh, especially in the hilly areas, because they are more exposed to sun. Mm. And uh, luckily, we people have the skin type, mostly we have the skin type 4, okay? So, uh, the skin cancer issue is being faced, the mm. people who mm. have skin type 1 or 2. Which is? If, uh, which means that they are the people who are more white. Right. Especially if we talk Caucasian about simple words, the Gora people. Right. Okay, they have more. They have more chances of being uh, of having skin cancer. Right. Okay. In Pakistan, we have uh, the people, especially we in the subcontinent region. Yeah. Uh, our uh, skin is protected from uh, uh, having uh, skin cancer. Right. Exactly. Yes. And while we, we, we're speaking of it and you know different types of skin and what illnesses can you get, you know now in the elderly people over here in Pakistan, I've seen the, you know I'm not really sure. Right. I think I've skipped the word of that illness or disease where you start to get those uh, white patches on your skin as well. Yeah. You know, so white LIGO? Yeah, white LIGO, yes, mm -hmm. exactly. So, I, and I've seen that the prevalence has actually increased in elderly, pe elderly population over here within the country. I have a few people within my own family. I have uh, a few people in UK as well who are suffering through the same pr uh, problem. And is it because of the pigmentation process something? Can you please make us understand? Uh, no, this is not the pigmentation process. Okay. White LIGO is autoimmune disease. Okay. And uh, it's, a re its cause is unknown till now. So, uh, so, so, we, so we don't have, have any, uh, we do, don't right. know the exact cause of white LIGO. We treat it, we, t we can stop it, we can revert it back, but the uh, cause of the white LIGO is unknown. And it is not related to the age. Right. Okay. Okay. It may be in the young people, it may be in the elderly people. So what solutions do we have for white LIGO? We have different treatment options. We go for phototherapy, we go for uh, skin grafting. To stop it. Uh, to stop it. Or probably if we are to increase it so that, you know, you, you just convert into another... Uh, you know, white person, <laughs> I mean, what would no, you do? There, there are chances because if the b more body is involved, then we mm. go for hypo, we go for hypopigmentation. Okay. What we do, right. uh, we reduce the pigmentation of that area which have the normal skin color. All right. right. We then convert it to the b white LIGO or white patches so that the body have the same color. Right. And now let's talk about the condition I think that is uh, getting more and more prominent, especially among the women, which is the melasma, right? Um, so we, we do see the prevalence of melasma. And what is exactly the contribution? 
contributing factor towards it and how to stop its growth mm. uh, because it, it grows eventually across your entire screen, mm. right? The main contributing factor uh, uh, of um, for melasma mm. is the uh, sun exposure. Oh. Because we have ultraviolet rays in the sun yes. and uh, the people who are going more in the sun, they mm. have the more uh, chances of getting pigmentation on the face. And the people who are inside, even then they have the chances, but the chances are very, very less. And the second thing is this, during the pregnancy, if you have seen that the women during the pregnancy, they get melasma. Right. That is uh, pregnancy induced melasma. Okay. And uh, there are also and some... And it fades away after the pregnancy? It depends. Okay. Though okay, it is stubborn, it fades away, but it yeah. takes a lot of time okay. and it, it, it takes... Uh, uh, she has to go uh, through a lot of procedures as well. Mm -hmm. right. And if you talk about the, the hormonal melasma, mm -hmm. if the, some uh, females are facing some hormonal problems, mm -hmm. they also get the melasma. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you talk about the treatment of melasma, for, uh, fourth one is the most common in Pakistan is the melasma, uh, steroid-induced melasma. Okay. That is because of formula creams. Oh. Most of us have heard that the people are using the, uh, the formula creams and they make them gora within 15 days, 20 right, days, right. one month. All those injections. Uh, yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, and uh, most of the time, the in especially in the peripheral areas, what the girls do, they use uh, formula creams, especially before getting married. Yeah. They are of mm -hmm. the view that uh, we will get, uh, b we will have uh, white color uh, within few days or within few mm. uh, within a month or two. Unfortunately, mm. unfortunately, and that mm. is uh, very dangerous. Mm. And to treat that melasma is very difficult. Mm. For further, if you go for the treatment option, then uh, we have the option of different lasers type. We have mesotherapy options. We have PRP options. And uh, even then, it depends further the how depth the melasma is, how deep it is, and uh, then further the treatment and, and the response accordingly. And we are never sure sure that what sort of a response we are going to get out of it because. We it not is sure. steroid induced as well. So I think that it's another message for people who are out there who are listening. Please make sure that you do not let your kids do that. You know, it's your responsibility. And any individual who's out there, please make sure that you're not, um, you know, a victim to inferior complex. You know, whatever you've been sure. bestowed with, uh, Allah mm. Almighty has given you a beautiful body and a soul. So please make sure that mm. you own it, you know, have that confidence in the first place. Mm. Meanwhile, God forbid, if there's any other issue, you can certainly address it. You can go mm. to people like Dr. Mubashir as well. But sir, now let's come down to our dietary habits, you mm. know, because I've seen for the longest period of time, even without mm. research, people would tell other, you know, patients that, hey, you know what, mm. you're not supposed to eat anda, you're not supposed to eat zardi, you're not supposed to eat this and that and whatnot. Uh, you know, for um, my, um, you know, non-Urdu speaking audiences, I was talking about, you know, how the doctors have always been advised because dermatology wasn't really in fashion back then. I'm talking about 1990s or early 2000s. And so every doctor you're going to go to with acne or melasma or such problems, they would only adjust your dietary habits. Please do not have egg whites, do not right. have egg yolks Oily and whatnot. Stuff, yeah. yeah. Mm. So now how do you think that, you know, science after research has actually shaped up a newer formulation mm. of uh, SOPs that, okay, yeah, this is something which you should do, this is something which you should do. So how much of impact do you think our diet has on our skin? Or, or is there a direct connection between our diet and our yeah. skin? Yeah, definitely. Mm. Uh, uh, Mr. Shiraz has already a lot of uh, uh, a lot of uh, knowledge about <laughs> the <laughs> diety uh, relationship between yeah. the skin. Uh, if we simplify it, uh, we uh, if we go for the uh, balanced diet, suppose uh, we take proper vegetables, uh, fruits, uh, fresh juices. This uh, these things are part of our routine diet. Then the skin is quite okay with that. Okay. And uh, even not okay with that, we have good skin. We may go for the uh, shiny skin, and uh, we our skin also glows. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, if we talk about, uh, you guys are were mentioning before that uh, the junk food, mm -hmm. the junk food also affects, also uh, Im impact on our skin as well. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the uh, there are some foods which uh, uh, which induce more sebum production, right. which causes acne. Right. Okay, and uh, uh, the same is uh, uh, if uh, we have more acne, we have a more oily skin, we will have more acne, okay? Mm. And uh, b uh, fresh juices, fresh vegetables, proper sleep, more water intake, mm. all these things improve our skin. Right. Right. And Dr. Sir, what is the difference between a sunblock and a sunscreen and which are more effective in the market according to the skin type? These are the same things. Okay. So sunblock, sun, sunscreen is sun, the same. Sunblock, sunscreen are the same things. Right. So it's a different marketing technique. Yeah. And so, you know, in our region, you know, what SPF should we use? I don't know what SPF is. Yes. Sun protection, something? Sun protection factor. He knows. Sun, yes. <laughs> sun protection factor. He's very well versed in skin care yeah. 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 Because most of the time what people do is, well, you know, get get a sunblock with SPF 100. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes people say get a sunblock with SPF okay. 50 or 80 or 70. Yes, yeah. mm -hmm. So, in our region, in Pakistan, considering it's winters these days, 
what sort of SPF do you think that we should? Normally, I recommend to go for more than uh, 60. A uh, sun protection mm -hmm. factor must mm -hmm. be uh, 60 or more than 60. Okay. And, and it's, quite it's different for the hilly areas and the plain areas. For example, if you're living in a mountainous areas where the exposure of the sunlight is, um, I would say, more as compared to the uh, valleys or as compared to places like Islamabad. So what sort of a difference between is there? Definitely, sun exposure in the hilly areas is more mm -hmm. as compared to the people who are living in Islamabad or in the Punjab region. Mm -hmm. Because we are near to sun, so the damaging effects of the sun rays are more in the hilly areas. And most of us have seen that, that the people who are living in the hilly areas, mm -hmm. they have more wrinkles, more pigmentation on their skin. That's because of the sun exposure. And if you talk about the sun uh, sunblock usage, uh, sunblock definitely, uh, they must use sunblock. And the sun protection factor, uh, that must be 60 or above the 60. They, right. they can go up to up till 100. Oh. And the second, again, one thing I want to mention that the people who have oily skin, they must choose sebum control sunblock. Okay. Right. If they will use normal sunblock, they will, uh, they will have more acne. Mm -hmm. So it is very necessary to the, tell the audience that the people who have oily skin, they should, mo uh, they should use sebum control sunblock. And the last thing, we are uh, entering this uh, winter season. Mm -hmm. yeah. In hilly areas, most of the time, we b have seen the snowfall and the people yeah. go there and you are the snowfall. They think that the because there is no sun, so we right. don't need to use a sunblock. True. Mm. They are more exposed to the sun rays. Oh, okay. Reason behind is this, the sun rays coming from the upside, mm. the same sun rays are Reflected. reflecting from the snow. Okay. True. So they are more exposed, so they are in more need of uh, using sunblock. So everybody needs to apply sunblock, you know, th th right. that is one thing that we've sorted out. Mm. You know, I think that you know, this is one question which I've always had in my mind and that is that, so no matter whatever right. sunblock I, I'm going to buy from the market, it's certainly not going to be the way the cricketers put it, you know, while they're on the field as well. You know, they would always have these white layers on there. Mm. Is there a difference of sunblock that they are using or, you know, is, is it the technique, you know? Mm. What happens? Because I've seen a lot of cricketers putting on sunblock. So, usually they will have their forehead covered with, you know, this white cream or something. But whenever we get sunblock, you know, we never get those. The thing is that they are more exposed to the sun okay. because they need to be there in the field for uh, two hours, three hours, four hours. So they uh, they need to put it like that, okay? And if we are, uh, for example, we are going in using, uh, we are going in our routine life. We are not that much exposed, and we're not standing in the field. We are not standing in the uh, sun for two hours, three hours for fielding, for batting like that. No? Yeah. So, the, the so it's a different type that you use. Yeah. Now let's come down to. A surge in laser treatments, you know, Botox injections and oh yes. and whatnot. <coughs> and unfortunately, surgery. I've seen that <coughs> people now are actually addicted towards these uh, treatments. Mm. Mm. You know, so there's so many treatments which are readily available. How many of them will you recommend? And how many of you th really think that people really need to consult a doctor first and then go for such treatments? Mm. Well, first of all, you have told that first of all, consult a doctor dermatologist and don't go for the parlor thing like that yeah. but the people go to the parlor and they say that you should get it done you should, you should get this you should get this and they are all they have also equipment there I will recommend to first go to the dermatologist go to the doctor and get consult her okay and then after consulting then go for the treatment first I want to make sure I want to tell you that the all the procedures all the laser equipments all the laser procedures we are doing the doctors are doing all are FDA approved okay, okay. And the practicing we are using here in Pakistan are quite safe. And as you were asking me that uh, the people, the person is uh, uh, in need of the uh, in need of that procedure or not, he should go, uh, he should get that or not. It depends. The doctor will decide. The doctor will recommend. Normally, what we do, uh, the person come to me. For example, he says that uh, I have melasma issue. Then I will give him the option that mm -hmm. for the treatment of melasma, we have this option, we have this option, we have this option. Then it depends. Mm -hmm. Further, okay. further, we also tell them that these are the uh, this is the cost of this procedure. Right. The person uh, then the person selects accordingly. Okay. And the thing uh, further is this that we have uh, different types of uh, laser uh, equipment, laser laser machines available, and every machine has different role. For example. Hair removal have different machine and the Q-switch laser Miso, is... Miso, Hydra, Fascia, yeah. I don't know, you know so Garden many machines out there. Yeah. 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 And and very quickly, people who keep on injecting Botox, you know, mm -hmm. to, to you look younger, do you think in later stages they will certainly see a rapid mm -hmm. impact of wrinkles increasing on their skin? And we don't no. see that the surgery is going always in a correct direction, right? Because they end up... Sometimes it's going to be a little bit, sometimes it's going to be a little bit, you know, things like that. Definitely, every procedure has different complications. 
and uh, if you talk about the botox it doesn't mean that the botox is going to have uh, uh, botox the person who is getting botox is going to have more wrinkles in the skin in later stage it does, it's not like that botox has certain lifespan for example it has the 4 months to maximum 6 months yep. after 6 months the wrinkles will appear as it were uh, it were before okay. it doesn't mean it is going to appear more it is going to worse the wrinkles yep. and uh, if you talk about the surgical procedure if uh, uh, getting the procedure from the skilled hand from a proper surgeon then it will be quite obvious that they will have good results and further again there are complications of every uh, every procedure and uh, we the doctors first explain the uh, our clients mm. that these are the complications and there are chances but always uh, it doesn't mean that uh, we are uh, uh, for example if I give you example of Panadol Panadol have complication as well true mm. okay and the same every cosmetic procedure every uh, laser have different complications but if you will go for uh, proper dermatologist proper trained yeah, doctor, then there are minimum chances of getting these complications. And one last thing very quickly and that is that uh, unfortunately over here in Pakistan you can get any medicine off the counter, you know mm -hmm. all you need to do is you, you, you need to know the chemist or probably the shop owner and I have seen that there has been an increase of the use of retinol I guess if, if that's the cream people are using it too much and then eventually end up having those um, you know I don't know uh, inflammation in the skin you know the skin starts to get red because they're over consuming it as well do you think it's a healthier activity or would you like to put a foot down and say that we need to stop retinol it? has certain impact on the skin but again the doctor will decide okay retinol had different com uh, different composition uh, composition with different percentage and then again if your doctor will recommend you he will say he or she will say that go with minimum dose okay for example once in a week or twice a week then the response of the skin will be checked and accordingly dose will be increased all right, right. If, uh, right. if you go for the over the counter definitely they will apply it according to their own will and then we'll get because in England the same cream is for 120 pounds and over here it's for 20 or 30 rupees only <laughs> I yeah. think that's the difference mm. yeah so thank you so much Dr. Sa for coming here for shedding the light on the skin issues that we face in the winters and especially we face a lot of dry flakes mm. uh, on our skin in the winters and uh, once again we would like to reiterate this fact that the skin is the largest organ of a body and make sure that you protect it and make sure because this is the imanat of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you look after it and uh, after a short break, we are going to come back and we are having a very interesting discussion lined up that too related to artificial intelligence. It, it so can make worry. you look younger as well. Good morning. <laughs> Welcome back and before going on to the break we were talking about that how our lives are changing because of the artificial intelligence and obviously people were talking about lots of gloom and doom and ready situation about how artificial intelligence is going to take over the entire world or is taking up the entire world but obviously we need to learn to live with this technology because this is the future and this is the new normal that we are going and uh, I think earlier on in this year there were uh, CEOs of the Silicon Valley who said that we need to have a proper uh, code of ethics design in order to manage this artificial intelligence because its uh, unethical use can be very dangerous and we have seen how the photos which would look so original um, in their construct which cannot be detected by our naked eyes were proliferated across the internet which we thought were uh, actual general pictures but they were all created because of the artificial intelligence. So how to adapt our lives according to artificial intelligence, what sort of things that we need to take care of that and how our work is going to change because of the artificial intelligence. We are very glad that we have been joined by an IT expert who happens to be Mr. Kesar Ansar. Assalamu alaikum and thank you so much for coming well to our show. Wa thank you for inviting me for right. this discussion. Right, so how is our work going to change because of the artificial intelligence? Because obviously we do see the intrusion or the diffusion of artificial intelligence in our life and I think smartphone is the biggest example of that, right? Uh, but obviously it's a double-edged sword. People are also talking a lot of things about how dangerous it can be. But let's talk about you know how it is benefiting us okay so uh, if you remember earlier this year like we were having the discussion about chat gpt like yep. it was seemed to be the uh, you can say the best innovation ever 
and we were saying like it will you know change the whole world yes. and obviously chat gpt was something that was uh, in the field of artificial intelligence or deep learning or machine learning which is obviously the uh, you know broader terms of uh, artificial general intelligence mm -hmm. that was something a very big uh, achievement in the field of information technology of our ai so uh, obviously with uh, the introduction of chat gpt and there are some other large language model so initially we have to understand like how these large language models are uh, you know actually uh, working and what is the future of these large language models like gpt uh, chat gpt is one of the large language model we do have a new large language model which is a talk of the town right now which is group which is basically uh, uh, initiated by Elon Musk and his team, XAI. So, uh, Grook is, is, you can say, it is competing GPT 3.4, which is the current available, uh, you know, version of chat GPT. And uh, uh, it, it is, you can say, if uh, Grook is, you know, is going to challenge the GPT-4, which is the most latest large language model available. So we need to understand like how GPT-4, which is right now not available publicly freely, but it is available as a paid version of GPT. Uh, so it, it can also generate, uh, you know, data from images, mm. voice and text. So the, the available version is the uh, text only. Yeah. So uh, as uh, you already mentioned that we mm. can, we have a lot of images that is being generated by AI, but we cannot identify with naked eye, is it original or yes, fake? True, so, true. so with the inclusion of this uh, GPT-4 and th there are some other uh, large language model that is in the pipeline that is, you know, uh, going to be launched soon. Mm -hmm. It is, it is going to be a very challenge for uh, to identify the to differentiate uh, yeah, between the differentiate between between, yeah. Exactly. Th this is something which I believe that, you know, everybody, um, you know, has come across mm. recently. Yes. You know, people know the challenges and people know mm. the dangers of it as well. Even Elon Musk has spoken about it that, you know, that people cannot even comprehend yes. that how dangerous it is. But as soon as, you know, the, the chat G GPT was released, I bought the paid version of it. I tried mm. using it and then, you know, yeah. there was this one thing which I came across and that was that, you know what, that you know, if uh, I am going to continue to use it, I'm going to hinder my own process of comprehending, you know, probably right. not just that writing, thinking of words and whatnot. True. And to, to, for us, you know, to mm. refer to it as artificial intelligence is that for all of those words that, you know, humans have used in their language, it's just reproducing it, making sure that, you know, it's right in front of you so that you can pick and choose and then kind of decide about it. So certainly not for kids who are out there, school, college or university going, going because of the fact that you really need to have this ability of your own with which you can decide whether you need to use it or not. But that's one example of artificial int intelligences. I think that there's more about it, there's more about augmented uh, reality, there's yes. more on it as well. So how would you kind of shed yes. light on yes. augmented reality? This is something which people are talking about. Imagine that we are looking at people, you know, building spaces within, right. you know, or with data and yeah. then, you know, selling it off, buying it, it's another business hub, you know, right. so everything's Virtual going on. It's reality just, and yeah, it's avatars just, it's and all of this. something different yes. now. Yes. Okay, so, uh, first of all, like you j just mentioned that this is one of example, like, who it is it, uh, you know, that children, kids can use it or not. So, first of all, what I believe is, uh, like, Artificial intelligence could be taught in the earlier stages during the the True. initial education to the yeah, to teaching the kids artificial like intelligence yeah. and taking advantage of artificial intelligence will be two different things. Different yes. things, but obviously, uh, no coming up with applications of artificial intelligence in different industries. Okay, so like uh, you just mentioned, augmented reality. Augmented reality is one of the uh, you can say emerging technology. Obviously, yep. augmented reality is something different from artificial intelligence True. in general because it it helps you in, for example, in uh, if we talk about this. Uh, you know clothing brands and then in, in uh, obviously if, if, if you talk about the glasses like oh artificial intelligence so augmented reality is helping you is to you know augment that exactly uh, you know cloth or glasses or any kind of you mm -hmm. know uh, uh, wearable thing to you know uh, experience that in your home yeah. before ordering online True. so that is what an ex example yeah, of if uh, paint yes. Karane laga hon, kaisa yes so that is an example uh, of uh, that is that is already in Amazon app. If you go, that is a view in your room feature exactly. that allows you. Okay, you want mm. to decorate your home. Mm. Home. So what you can do is you can you know drag and drop s s certain you know furnitures and you can see. Okay, so you would know about yeah. things before they have actually yes. taken actually. place and, and you know for whatever decision that you take. Idea yeah. because I think IKEA also made an. Um, 
app or ad regarding yes. that in which they incorporated the virtual reality into their uh, particular campaigns and they made sure that people have people can identify with that and they, they can make an more informed decision True. but now let's talk about uh, the dangers of artificial intelligence because there's lots of debates regarding that like Shazad mentioned there are lots of deep fake photos there are lots of deep fake audios nowadays um, and there's so much deep fakes that you cannot identify that without any software right so uh, how do you think do, do you think that we as a humanity can come together on a point where we can identify or we can yeah. make some Rules, uh, rules or code of ethics about how to use it in the first place. Because imagine we can always come across an audio of Atif Aslam mm -hmm. singing a Bob Marley song, you know, so it will be very different for of people course. to understand and whether and who did it. It is used as a witness in the court yep. or against you, you know, so it's very dangerous in the first place. Y yes, obviously, uh, like uh, with, with the advancement of AI, obviously there are certain challenges for example, like you just mentioned about deep fake, like uh, you can generate certain audios that seems to be realistic, but obviously it is just True. generated by AI. So th this is right now a challenge to the whole world and the uh, uh, leaders of AI, uh, the leaders of the tech, they are right now, you know, uh, thinking about it. There are certain debates, there are certain conferences, like who we can regularize or who we can, you know, uh, you well, What's you your take people. on it? Do you think that it needs to be regularized? Yes, obviously, because yes. you, you just imagine like there is a video mm. generated by deep fake and people here like there are, there are uh, less than 1% you know, uh, educated people about the AI or the tech. Mm. So there were videos before artificial intelligence, deep fake, even then people certainly didn't agree that it was their, <laughs> their video anyways, you know, <laughs> people are, are were in denial. But but that is that is that is why it is you know necessary to have some sort of regula uh, reg regulations and also some sort of rules and ethical use. Mm. So as we were discussing, like what will be the future of work with AI? So it is the AI is not just you know helping you to writing essays, writing movie scripts. Or how do you it think it's going to keep us healthier? Let's talk about that. Yeah. Artificial yeah. intelligence. Yeah. Obviously, like for example, it, it uh, helps you to, uh, you know, uh, make informed decisions okay. like uh, as we have uh, billions of data set that is being, the, that GPTs or that AI is being trained on billions of data sets. So, it helps you to make informed decisions. Okay. I, for example, you have a movie script, like you don't need to have a person to review that movie script like sure. it can be a review yeah, that yeah. your your movie script sets mm. so it is a some sort of healthier right. uh, f uh, for you as well but obviously it is about how you use, use it mm. and uh, Yes, right. And I, and I, I, I think especially in the HRs of the particular departments because they uh, lots of people are applying for the job and they do not have the time to go through True. every application form, especially when you're applying for the university. So there is a machine automation in which machine is first, um, I mean, filtering it through and then passing it through the people. But obviously human touch uh, is always there and you can always identify that if there is a human touch in that particular write-up or not. Uh, because artificial yeah. intelligence is just gathering the data from the database from True. the big data that is on the Wikipedia, right? And not everything is so there. So it's more like you've hired somebody to learn on your behalf and then you use the expertise because it's evolving every single day. The data is increasing and you know, so th that data certainly comes into your machine and device learning and that's exactly how you're going to use it. So imagine that, you know, if somebody unfortunately went with an open wound to a doctor, obviously doctors are very experienced yeah. or they are in a situation of such sort. Do you think artificial intelligence can help or how deep the wound is, what sort of medication mm. needs to be given, how are we supposed to help this patient or something of that sort? It is actually giving you. Really? Yeah. Yes. But but obviously yeah. right now, AI, in uh, particularly in medical field, like if it will take some time to be more accurate. Like True. obviously if it is more than 90% accuracy in win AI in medical field, wow. obviously it will help you to identify identify many things right now I was came across uh, a picture that a person ha uh, had an injury in okay. his finger and he just captured that picture and uh, you know g uh, gave it to the chat GPT-4 and it actually explained what was the causes of this you know wound and how you can recover from this obviously at the end it will say okay consult with the doctor but yeah. it is in the early stages particularly in medical field but obviously it will help to uh, it will help in future to you know identify many complex uh, that exactly even, and we come uh, and we keep that's on very coming. scary no Shazad yeah. because I don't want to be in the bed where machine is operating on me I uh, think you should be more you know you'll be more confident you like okay you know lakho ka, you know I mean, what of if it goes wrong you know doctor has this judgment that if something is going wrong he can yeah. always put it out but if but machine is doing it I mean you are when gone the doctor does it, unfortunately when the doctor does it wrong I think we do blame the doctor too you know so probably we'll be blaming the computer <laughs> too as well and computer it <laughs> but right. now very sorry very quickly coming back to 
where I keep on coming across such articles where, <coughs> you know, we will be able to, or the machine will actually let us know that unfortunately probably in six months time you're going to get a heart attack, you know, or probably in seven <laughs> yes. months time, you know, you'll be diagnosed with such an illness, you know, things like that. I mean, we certainly do not want to know that God forbid what's going to happen, but obviously it's for our betterment that we can get ourselves treated. Do you think that that's for real? It's, 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 it's the, the true? The big data predictions, yeah. Yes, yeah. it is true. Really? Yeah, it is in research as well. And as I already mentioned, <laughs> like, you know, you're going to get oh, married four th times. That, that is something, <laughs> yeah, obviously, if we actually what we have to understand is like who it works. Okay. It is actually what I we give is we give uh, AI model. There okay. are certain sort, uh, sort of AI models like large language model. What we give is we give billions of data, True. the historical data the data set and that model is basically trained in that data set and okay. it will actually make a decision based on that data set. Right. But obviously uh, with AI like right now what is the discussion in the town is like AI will you know kill all the jobs and AI will just no, you no, know no. but obviously AI will help you hmm. you know you know in, in tech what I believe is like I have been following the, the top fortune 500 companies as well every company laid off their employees not all but they you know, right, they, right. they just they, they just uh, you know shrink their implies that they brought ai hmm. yep. but ai is helping you it will help you to you know uh, take a lot of yes. a lot of you know human resource work hmm. will be done by ai yeah. it is cost effective hmm. it is much better in decision making but obviously it will not kill all the jobs at the end hmm. just you know uh, we were talking about the uh, you know uh, 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 operation yeah. the obviously that, right. it will it will help you to in, it will create some more jobs, yeah. new jobs, right, which it's are not existent before, right? So, for example, uh, our grandparents' generation never knew that there will thing, there, there will be a thing called computer and it will change or revolutionize the entire yeah. landscape. And how many jobs have computer created And now, even right? when the computers came in and there was internet, you know, you know how reluctant were our parents, oh, hmm. nay, nay, you know, it's not a Mobile good thing and whatnot. Yeah. Now everybody's using yes. it. Now, yes. let's, let's come down to where, I don't know, you know, I, but I'm, I'm thinking this way. So, imagine that... I see uh, that there will be a time when you know artificial intelligence mm -hmm. will be a mandatory in every work workplace you know or probably at homes as well we do see mm -hmm. Alexa and Google and other mm -hmm. devices popping up how they can control mm -hmm. the entire household and whatnot so imagine a lot of decision making will eventually True. come from the artificial intelligence based models right or guided so by it. exactly or yes. guided by it so yes. imagine don't you think that you know there will be a day unfortunately I, I mean I'm sorry that I'm bringing this out mm. that one day that you know all of those decision making since it will be taking place from machines that anybody who's at the helm of affairs of those machines can really guide people to whatever they want for their benefit so uh, first that's, of all that's like the biggest it is scare right yeah. that's the biggest scare it's out there right you know, know we need like to address the what, what I would tell you right now every app you are using like it is using AI at yeah. some point okay. right now we are also like facebook instagram any app like for example you go to instagram i mentioned in one of the programs like earlier like so we 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 ads yeah, ads yeah. that is basically like yeah. each for example you are using android they're they're always listening to certain keywords like for example you you talk about certain brands like you will eventually uh, came up yeah, yeah, have, uh, having those ads it's so eventually ai is all already being there but a new variant of ai which is more you can say uh, capable of doing more uh, informed decision making work. is yeah. there mm -hmm. but eventually AI will evolve mm. it will be more and more in your daily routine everyday task like in any industry it will help people to you know and uh, there is always some sort of inclination towards such a decision making that you know that while we're buying things on online you know it's just because the conversation that we've had and all of a sudden we see that ad popping up and like oh you know, you know, so right. so they we do see that there's an influence of it on our decision making. Most of the most of the platforms already have AI assistant, hmm. which helps you to okay, you just give another thing is like we were talking about earlier, like how it helps is like we have to uh, you know understand how for example you were saying like you were using chat GPT yep. and at some stage if you just use the normal language it will break or it will you know give you some fal uh, false information. Yep. But what you have to understand is like how it to use it. Where do you there are certain sort of uh, parameters, keywords that you have to uh, explain. Okay. Like for example, if I ask a question from a large language model, it is GPT-4 or either it is GROOK. So you will ask that question in a different you know, perspective, a different, a different sentence and I will do it different. I will give certain you know, uh, uh, parameters as well and then 
it will give Obviously. you the certain different response. So we really need people to be kind of trained to how to use all of these uh, large language models as well. But thank you so much, Kaisan, so sir, much. for being with us. Every time you are here, you know, I, I take pride in you because, you know, you, alhamdulillah, happen to be a success story away in Pakistan. Whenever we talk about information technology, for everybody who's out there, ladies and gentlemen, progress is the way. You know, please make sure that you keep on learning just like machines are doing these days. Right, right. And learn to live with the artificial intelligence because we don't have any other choice. So with that, we will say... Farewell and goodbye. Allah Hafiz to you. So until next time, it's a goodbye. Good and morning. Good morning.